welcome motorcycle enthusiasts for part four of the CBR build in the Honda Monkey sidecar. Um, this is the electrical walkthrough. So basically I'm gonna go through the electrics, what I found for challenges. Also, it might not pertain to most folks because a lot of my wiring ended up having to be done on the sidecar. And um, since it's very much winter here in Vermont right now, I think I believe it's about a negative five outside. Wind chill is like negative 25. So typically I can't ride too much uh, or do, mu too, do too much outside. So once I attached the sidecar, I really started to hit that wall of being able to be productive outside. So the first thing I did was I printed out a giant wiring diagram. Uh, if you need it, you can email me at jeds at jedsmoto.com. I'll email out my image. I printed it out. It was printed out and I put it on four pieces of paper. The diagram I had had ABS. My harness does not have ABS. It's very similar. There's just some minor changes. It also seems like some things are a little different, specifically with the, the directional relay and um, the fuel pump relay to the diagram to what is actually on the machine. Uh, just so you know, so they're in a blue connector. That's where you're going to find your fuel pump relay and your radiator fan relay. So just make sure that your harness has those if you pull them out. Uh, mine did not. So um, luckily for me, the fuel pump relay from the Grunky will work on the CBR relay location. It's a different size relay, but it does work. Fuel pump will prime. I did have to wait and get the radiator relay, and I got I ordered that through Revzilla. Use the OEM finder, the parts finder, and just order that bit. So make sure you have those relays. Those are kind of important. Um, if not, your radiator, your cooling fan won't come on, or your fuel pump won't prime. So this part of the the process was very challenging. Um, it just was super time consuming because I wanted to run the wires correctly, uh, make sure all my wires were ran to the right places especially you know for the directionals and then i had to do a custom mount or custom wiring for the the directional going to the sidecar while i was had the wiring loom out i also installed my heated grips for me heated grips is one of those things and now that i have an engine that has an actual charging system that's worth it worth a damn i wanted to have the the heated grips so i installed those put those in the loom put them in a uh, power on only. So the first thing was just running the wires, making sure everything is correct, running your harness. And I, I, I basically took the harness off the bike uh, on the 250 and I just ran it with the, with the diagram. And I had the tail section of the monkey with me in the house because it was just too cold outside to work on it. And I basically ran all the wires so that the left directional was wired up correctly. And then for the right directional, I deleted that so that, you know, I could use the directional feed into the sidecar because I'm running directional lights on the sidecar. So that's where I'm different. So the lights obviously are different. Uh, you need to have, make sure you have the lighting harness for the CBR in order to make it work. I got rid of the stock headlight. I'm running a, a seven inch universal day maker headlight. Uh, it's black, the black background, and it's really nice. I like it. It sh throws out a lot more light than the stock headlight anyways, and that's running on an H4 plug. So, like, again, if you're going to make the harness work for your monkey, you're really going to have to play with what wire works correctly, what wire doesn't work correctly. Um, and uh, I did not do that. I, I decided to convert everything over to an H4 anyways just because I wanted a brighter light for the front the clip switch for the key switch is not the same as a Grom. So what I ordered, I ordered the Zener diode kit that you can get from my bum, but you can buy the kit online. Here it is. And uh, I believe this guy does like a lot of builds for Honda Groms for these things. So check him out. He has a YouTube channel. I just ordered the parts like, oh, well, you know, the switch has got to be the same. They're not. So the Grom uses like a two wire system the monkey uses a three wire system so it's the prong end is a female end just like it is on the cbr side so they're the same plug but they're in uh, they, they will never be able to connect uh, also the zener diode sends out a nine volt signal to the ecu to let it start up um the monkey does the same thing but i believe it's seven volts when i checked it so there's a zener diode in 
in the actual monkey switch, but it's a different voltage as well. So there's a there's a key that that too has a, a, a safety switch. I cut off the Grom end of the harness that I got from online and wired it in to the monkey switch. And at that point, because it has the Zener diode in there, uh, it just I just used the two switches that did work, and then I plugged it into the CBR harness because that plugged perfectly so that worked great and the, this the the thing if you're doing a drum swap i would totally just get this this little clip this little you know wiring harness adapter it it's great it has a zener diode in it you don't even have to mess with it you just plug it in and it works great um of course if you're running an a racer ecu it doesn't even matter but um i'm running the stock ecu at this time and uh, you need the Zener diode in, to, in order to get the bike to fire up. For the uh, ignition wires, they're not in a good location on the Monkey where the CBR dash I landed up. It just doesn't reach long enough to the, the ignition coil if you keep the stock ignition coil spot on the Monkey. So I had to extend out the ignition coil wires just so I can get a little more, so the signaling wires, so just so I can get a little more play in, in, the, in the harness. There was just no way we could, the harness was going to fit. The loom was going to fit to where the coil was. It was just on the wrong side of the bike. Like I said, it, it's just all about taking your time and putting that loom in the correct spots. And in one of the ways to do that, you had to, I had to um, extend the wires to ignition coil. Uh, just make sure that your grounds are in a good spot as well. I discovered that if you're not grounded out correctly, things just don't work right. Like lights won't come on or things won't turn on or the fuel pump won't turn on. The, there's just, you just gotta make sure there's a lot of good grounds. And I also ran a ground from the engine itself to the battery as well. So there's a really good grounding system on the whole bike. So the fuel pinout is different. I followed the, the monkey pinout and there's a, uh, Basically, if you were to just plug the plug-in from the CBR harness into the monkey, you can get the fueling map to come on and it'll trick you because when you turn the switch and hit the ignition, you'll hear the fuel pump sounds like it. You'll hear it go and you're like, oh, it's prime. Perfect. And I went to start it and it just went fire, went fire, went fire. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, the wiring is backwards. So when you turn the key and turn it on the fuel pump light the the wiring in the cbr will prime the fuel pump backwards so it won't actually pump it just runs the pump backwards so um my bad right so uh because you could hear the pump running but it's running backwards so what i did was i switched the wires i also at this point extended just like the coils i extended the wire for the fuel pump that that connector that four pin connector I extended those four wires just so I can get a little better movement because I couldn't actually snug the, the tank onto the frame. It was just too tight. So at that point, I had to switch the wires anyways and then extended them. But then the fuel pump primed and the bike fired. So um, that's one thing to I think of. At this I point, I would finish up the wiring, making sure everything was all lined up, um, make sure everything's all plugged in. Uh, it's tricky. I tried to bunch all my wires under my left uh, cover, my you know, the cover panel where the old regulator and stuff or the rectifier was. So I just kind of bunched up most of the wires, wrapped them up, and then snug them underneath, underneath that part, and put the the cover back on, and everything worked fine. So just you just gotta play with the wires. It's the hardest part of the project is I say it's just the most time consuming is doing the wiring if you want to do it right. And generally it's like you're you're nitpicking one thing out of the other and like figuring out the harness, like figuring out the directionals, you know, figuring out the ignition coil, the fuel pump. That was a that was a diagnostic nightmare. Well not really. It was just why isn't this weren't working? It's I've watched other videos. It should work and it wasn't working well because it was different on my bike. So keep that in mind. So Basically, that's all I've got. Like uh, the the harness itself is just you know just take your time with it. Those are the little glitches that I saw. You know, the the ignition key is different. The fuel pump was different. You got to extend 
Um, if you're going to keep the stock ignition coil location, you're going to have to extend those signal and ground wires um, and just extend the, the fuel pump wires as well because there's just no way you can fit that with the, 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 you know, the conventional type of gas tank that's on, on the Monkey. Um, other than that, it's pretty easy. At that point, you know, you want to make sure if, I, for me, I added fog lights, I added, you know, <clears throat> indicators, all this stuff, um, LED lights, all that stuff. You want to kind of add now, get it in done and over with, and then kind of just hide everything in the loom um, and just be done with it. And, you know, I was, I went a little extra because of um, the sidecar. I wanted the directional, I wanted, you know, all my corners to have running lights, wanted the directionals to work. Um, you know, but other than that, it ran great. Everything was all set. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I'm going through the shakeout myself, but everything else seems to be fine. So what I would do is after I get the, the, the wiring in the bike, fire it up, make sure you have no check engine lights, uh, make sure your sensor's hooked in. Uh, I always get, I got stuck on not plugging in the uh, bank angle sensor. So make sure your bank angle sensor is pointing in the right direction and plugged in, or it'll just say, you'll have a flashing check engine light which is annoying um but after everything fired up warmed up it worked great um you know i let it sit idle uh, on a warmer day which is still like 25 degrees and uh waited until the radiator kicked on everything kicked on so you know just make sure that everything is working correctly before you go out and start romping on it um you know but that's it. So I hope you find this informative. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at jets at jetsmoto.com or just put a comment in the comment section below. I have that diagram, so if you'd like to get it, send me an email, and I will send that out to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Keep a shiny side up out there, and if you can get out and ride, get out and ride.